All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, Why Men in Their 30s Are Still Single. And guys, I got to tell you, this is hands down probably one of the best articles that I have found thus far since I started the channel that talks about all how basically if guys have their lives together, being a bachelor is probably the best thing that's ever happened to you, okay? And why guys in their 30s, if they reach the point they haven't been married yet and they got their lives together, they've got it made. And why more and more guys are choosing this path, okay? For, for lots of reasons, but this article is going to really go into it. And aside from that, guys, the article also really talks about how basically how men... When we start off as teenagers, we're pretty much the low man in the totem pole. Let's be honest here with regards to with women and dating and, and all that whole thing, right? But as time goes on, as we improve ourselves, get our lives together, have an income, make money, all that, we rise on the totem pole in value. And we get to our 30s, that's when our prime begins. On the other hand, Women, when they when they become in their teens, they literally, depending on obviously how they look, they start higher up on the totem pole, and the really smoking hot ones, they start at the very top. But as time goes on, they go down on the totem pole in terms of, of value and demand, in terms of uh, SMV and things like that, while a guy rises. And it gets to the point where basically, as we know, guys can literally have the we hold the keys to relationships because ultimately most women no matter what they say at some point do want to settle down have relationships have kids all that but a lot of them in today's world wait way too long and then it's it's kind of slim pickings they can get guys don't get me wrong but to actually get guys that want to settle down with them that's a different ball game. And more and more guys are realizing just how great being a bachelor is. So I'm going to go through this, guys. It's really good. It's a little long, but I think it's going to really, it really covers so many things, not just me, but plenty of other guys with other great channels talk about and really reinforce with our audience. So starts off in their 30s, single women are in a mad rush to settle down. Their friends are posting photos on social media like there's no tomorrow. Destination weddings, excited pregnancy announcements, selfies with their committed partner on vacation. In her late 20s, a woman who is still single starts to panic. After this age, a serious relationship is a must-have item for a woman. She feels embarrassed that she hasn't yet managed to find a man to validate her as worthy of commitment. By contrast, many single men in their 30s are enjoying the single life. That is, if we if a guy's on his purpose, he's doing well for himself, has a clue on how things go, that's when our prime begins. So for you young guys, I want to point this out, that are in, that are in your, teen, your teens and your 20s and you're frustrated because you know you're the low man on the totem pole, I promise you, brothers, your time will come. Just be patient. Work on yourselves. We're pursuing casual flings or not daring at all, instead, or not dating at all, instead consumed by our hobbies and interests. Single men over 35 are blissfully content with enjoying our lives, our buddies, our careers, and our weekends. Why don't men in their 30s want to commit? Besides the lack of biology or social pressure to enter a serious relationship, there's one dirty little secret to why men, if they've reached their 30s as bachelors, avoid serious relationships with women. It says here, heterosexual men don't like the company of women. There is a truth that, can't, that can be difficult for women to accept. It can shout it down as sexist. It'll get you blocked on many popular internet forums. It's not polite to say in conversation. That doesn't make it any less true. Remotely, remove the possibility of sex, and many men have no interest in being around women. Think back to school playground. Little boys ride bikes, chase, wrestle with each other. Little girls braid each other's hair and play with dolls on the opposite side of the playground. Not until puberty, when a flood of hormones makes sex a necessity, do young males and females begin to interact. Pretty much sums it up, right? As he matures, a man actually grows more like his boyhood self on the playground, more interested in bikes and dogs, and his hobbies than the opposite sex. It says here, men enjoy women's bodies. Men enjoy sex both for the physical release and the feeling of accomplishment that comes with successfully seducing women. 
Men enjoy women's bodies as well as the admiration of their male peers when the woman in question is attractive. They may even think a woman is cool or an interesting person. However, most men don't like talking to or being around women if the possibility of sex isn't on the table. Consider the way a man... A man Consider the way men's behavior changes towards a woman from engaged and friendly to completely uninterested or even hostile once he knows that she has a boyfriend. Unattractive women also describe their interactions with men or the way that women complain about how men respond to them as they get older. Most report being ignored at best, treated rudely at worst. This simple misunderstanding is at the root of the friend zone. A heterosexual man will not invest his time into a woman. Talking to her, listening to her problems, providing free therapy, mechanical services, and favors unless he wants to sleep with her. When sex doesn't happen, he feels annoyed that he wasted his time. Translation, basically, as we come to realize more of value and all that, basically, we're not going to waste our time. Okay, like, I, mean, I can tell you this, guys. Like, basically, and a lot of people don't want to hear this, men and women can't be friends. It's just not going to work, okay? Especially a guy with a woman who's really good looking and he obviously wants to hook up with. Because that's not a real friendship. It's a fake friendship. And a lot of guys do that. They, they, they have a woman they like and she's not interested, but they think if they're her friend and they show her how much of a great guy they are and be her therapist, listen to all her problems, be there at the drop of a hat when she needs them to fix fix the sink, the toilet, whatever it happens to be, plenty of other stuff, then she'll choose them because she'll see how much of a great guy they are. It doesn't work that way. And at the end of the day, the guy is just waiting for his turn, okay? But if she was interested, he would have had his turn already. You know, I got a lot of women I know that I would consider friends on the basis that they are friends of friends, girlfriends or wives of different guys I know I'm friends with, things like that, some female clients. And don't get me wrong, I get along with them, but I wouldn't hang out with them, okay? I'm way too busy to spend my time actually hanging out with a gal that there's no hooking up going on, okay? The only way we're getting together is either we are presently hooking up or we're soon to be hooking up. I am way too busy. And a lot of women, not all, but a lot are a giant pain in the ass. So, and guys, you all... Many of you I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but younger guys, you'll discover this as time goes on, okay? Goes on. Uh, young women need men. <laughs> young men under the age of 35 are most susceptible to feeling like they need a woman. Dating or sleeping with, which is so, which is to say possessing an attractive woman or any woman at all, is, ne is necessary to allay their voracious sexual desires, as well as validates their identity as a man, both to themselves and among their peers. There is no greater accomplishment in the eyes of a group of younger men than nailing, also known as smashing or banging or effing, a hot woman. The conqueror is celebrated as a hero. His bros slap him on the back and cheer his success. He has slayed the dragon, the elusive, beautiful woman. Sound familiar? It was never about the woman. I reveled in both giving and receiving those accolades in my 20s and early 30s. Women were mysterious creatures that none of us understood. Actually, being able to sleep with one, not to mention an attractive woman, was a rare accomplishment, even for those among us that were considered good with women. Dating and seduction are always a numbers game for men. From high school to 30, when women are at the peak of their desirability, getting chased by dozens of men is a bloodbath. That's what I said. Women in their teens to about 30 years old, maybe 32, depending on how good looking they are, that's their prime. They've got it made. If you're a good looking woman in that time, in that, in that, uh, that age range, you got it made. But here's the interesting thing, guys. A woman that takes care of herself, that she's in the gym, she's great about her diet, dresses well, is feminine, that's a key area there. Even if she's past 30 or 32, going into her later 30s, 40s, and sometimes even 50s, if she is really taking care of herself, guess what? She's going to sell plenty of dudes after her. But it's not the same as the prime of the teens and 20s. Not even close. It says here, My most handsome and most charming friends, one a former U.S. Marine, another who was an amateur bodybuilder and a mixed-race Italian dude, who had modeled in Los Angeles, got rejected dozens of times for every one instance that they were successful. We celebrated with each other when we scored with women and drank to our failures when we didn't. Prowling bars together 
laughing and teasing each other was an act of bonding. We were like a band of brothers, soldiers in the trenches. Yep, I remember those days, and I'm sure many of you guys remember those days, or many of you guys are going through those days. But as this, you're going to get through, see through this article, this guy is going to point out that eventually that crap doesn't matter as much as you get older, and it is definitely true. He says here, in my late 20s, I started to realize I was excited to show my friends I could pull as much or even more than I was about actually sleeping with the woman. The main reason why older men, speaking of guys about 35 and up, don't want relationships is that by now, a lot of us have realized that too. It was never about women. We have a stronger sense of self and don't need a cheering tribe of bros to feel good about ourselves. By this age, we brag to each other about achievements in our career or business hobbies, interests, and side hustles, not sleeping with random women, unless she is, and he says in giant letters, exceptionally hot. Guys start to realize that, you know what, all that, that was great when we were younger, but now our purpose is more important. Making money is more important. Having a lot of fun hobbies, hanging out with our bros, that's more important and more enjoyable. And as you guys get older, for a lot of you younger guys that watch me, when you get to your 30s and definitely your 40s, you're going to understand this quite well. It says here, when I get to go with my friends for a beer, we brag about mortgage rates, toys, motorcycles that we bought, and our stock portfolios. Romantic relationships simply aren't as important to men as they are to women at any age. However, early on, young men's thirst for sex and validation can obscure that reality. He says, a guy in his 30s isn't as consumed by his desire for sex and is often perfectly happy with his various hobbies and interests. As such, he doesn't need, need or want a woman around 24-7. That would be my idea of hell. Absolutely my idea of hell. And I guarantee for many of you guys, it's probably the same thing. Sex was, was all he wanted in the first place. Move, away, move sex away down on the list of priorities and a relationship with the responsibilities and restrictions that come with it becomes unimaginable. At 37, I have a lifetime of accomplishment to look back on and a bright future ahead to propel me forward. In my time on earth, I've managed to, this is the author of this article, serve honorably in the U.S. Air Force, a childhood dream, travel all over the United States and the world, visiting 30 states and a dozen countries, including Thailand, Germany, England, Sweden, Costa Rica, and more. Guys, I'm a big traveler. I love it. I've been all over the world, all over this country, and it is amazing. Okay, so for a lot of you guys who haven't done that yet, maybe you haven't had the means to do so, when this COVID crap is over and the world goes back to normal, I highly encourage you to start that process. Even if you never even left your own state, just get in the fucking car and go drive somewhere. Get on a plane, pick a place and go. Enjoy yourself. There's so much of this world to explore. It's amazing. Uh, he goes on, I lived in an exotic foreign country for several years, something I aspired to as a child. Chased adventures like skydiving, snowboarding, running a triathlon, and a half marathon. Building this blog, work in my dream job is a highly technical engineering field. I've also remodeled a house, building a business, and starting, and starting school to pursue a career change. This sounds a hell of a lot more fun than playing house with some chick nagging you 24-7 and all that. I mean, yet so many guys pursue that route. He says, 30s and even 40s and 50s is young for a man. If a guy takes care of himself. Okay, I'll make that quite clear there. If a guy isn't taking care of himself physically and his health, 30s and 40s and definitely 50s is not young for that guy. But if he takes care of himself and he also has a passion and he pursues his hobbies, has a good social life and all that, saves him some money, different ballgame. It's great then. He says, I'm in great shape, full of ideas and energy, but with the benefit of having enough adult experience under my belt, I know what I'm doing. By contrast, women in my age group are slowing down. This is where he's talking about how men are rising, women are slowing down. He says, the male attention that is a woman's main source of self-worth since puberty tapers down to a trickle from the overwhelming, overwhelming avalanche that it was in her youth. She seeks validation in any little compliment from a horny teenager on the street. Women in their later years will brag on about how a young guy flirted with her at the gas station. When she was younger, men approached her constantly. After age 30, the slightest amount of male attention will become the highlight of her week. If she's unmarried or even unattached, she starts to feel the pressure of finding a man before it's too late. Older relatives and her grandma try to warn her, and that only increases her anxiety. 
this is dead on. This sounds like so many women that I have known or know over the years where they get to 30 and all of a sudden all grandma and the parents and everybody starts pressuring them and all that shit. And I'm not, not trying to feel bad for them. I'm just telling you the reality there. Meanwhile, during their prime in their 20s, they had endless opportunities to meet good look, really good looking ones, endless opportunities with great guys, guys that would have done anything for them, would have been great husbands. And they weren't interested in them. They were interested in riding the carousel and the bad boys. But then all of a sudden, one day when they convinced themselves that I'll be ready then, which basically means when, you know, the, the, caros the, the carousel stops spinning around and less guys are interested in them, that's when they want to settle. They think that they got it made still. It doesn't work that way. It says here, women in their 30s want to be in a committed relationship, if not living together and married right away. They understand either either instinctively or from being, seeing single older women that an attractive man is only harder and harder to secure the older she gets. It says here, dating women from early 20s to early 40s, I have an active dating life, seeing women from 22 to over 40. There is a palpable energy of older women wanting to push the relationship forward that isn't there compared to the casual, easy manner of younger women. Younger women come with their own set of challenges, but hinting at the commitment after five to six dates, in my experience, hasn't been one of them. Sometimes the pressure comes in the form of subtle hints, questions like, where do you see yourself in five years? Meaning to vet me for a possible serious relationship to outright, can I call you my boyfriend? Ten or even five years ago, I was the one chasing women, double texting, grasping to arrange a date. Now the roles have reversed. See? So guys, for those of you guys that obviously do dating relationships, and if you're young and you're teens and 20s and you're frustrated, trust me, focus, like I said before in the video, focus on yourself, focus on your purpose, and the roles will reverse. They'll be chasing after you soon enough. But you can't be some weirdo, okay? You can't be some freaking weird guy and, and, and look like shit and be 300 pounds. You got to take care of yourself. Let me make, make that clear. My attention, my masculine energy, and most of all, my commitment are at a premium. He says, I'm the prize to be won, and I know it. Women my age know this too. He says, single men aren't immature. One thing that women in this age don't understand is that the majority of men in their 30s have never experienced the kind of choice and fun of dating that we are enjoying now. Men have to build our value on our own. In the gym, perfecting charm and social skills, building a successful business or career. We fight tooth and nail for a position on the sexual marketplace starting from puberty. It takes the average of man 10 to 15 years to do this, at a minimum. At 30, he's just gaining a foothold. By 35, his effort starts to bear fruit. So, for our value to the opposite sex, you know, don't get me wrong, if you're good looking and all that, that was, that's a big deal, but we got to build our value. We got to be in the gym taking care of ourselves. We got to build our careers. We got to build up resources personality, charm, all that shit. Generally, a woman, when she starts in her teens, if she's just good looking, that's it. Now, obviously, she has to maintain those looks, but we have to actually work hard to do to, to get our value up in terms of with the opposite sex. Then, when we get to be older in our mid-30s, like this guy said, we got it made. Most of us. He says, by contrast, a woman, women receive their value in the sexual marketplace up front. As author and YouTuber Coach Greg Adams states, hey, he's uh, citing the coach. By the way, guys, if you don't check, if you haven't seen Coach Greg Adams, be sure to check him out. He's a real, he seems like a real, I don't know him, but he seems like a really cool dude. The guy really knows his shit. Definitely check him out. Uh, goes on, she simply, he says here, and he's quoted, she simply goes to sleep and wakes up every day. She's a little more developed and a little more attractive. At 16, she is blessed with shiny, flowing hair, soft skin, a curvy waistline, and, a vol and voluptuous breasts, while boys her age wrestle with acne, awkwardness, and a squeaky voice. Women revel in attention from all sorts of men more than 10 years after puberty. Boys she grew up with and men at work, construction workers on the street. They all want to buy her dinner, take her on trips, ply her with gifts. At the same time, men her age struggle to get a date at all like my friends and me at that age. Sound familiar, guys? Then when the attention starts to dwindle and her friends are getting married and posting ultrasound photos on social media, she decides to try and settle down. Her problem is men are still single, at least attractive ones are just getting started. 
single men at 35 and up, the 99% who weren't the captain of the football team or naturally gifted women are just now starting to experience the dating life that the woman has been experiencing or enjoying since the seventh grade. Men aren't immature for wanting to experience dates and sex with different women. Women had their fun in their earlier years. Insults like immature, man-child, and more are shaming language for frustrated women that waited too long to cash in their chips. I'm sure you guys are well aware of all the shaming that tries to go on to guys that are, like you said, post-35, that are single, enjoying their lives, and going out and hooking up with women left and right, or just doing whatever they want and just enjoying their lives. Because, like you said here, they had it made all those years in the teens and 20s, and for most guys that are single, that's when our prime begins in our, in our 30s. But we're then labeled as, like you said, man-child and things like that because we want to enjoy it as well. That's a bunch of bullshit, but, but that's what happens, and you all know this. He says, life is a bachelor. At 37, I love my freedom of being a bachelor. I come and go as I please. It is great. I flirt with, date, and seduce beautiful women of all different ages. We enjoy our time together, adventures, dates, sex. When the time is up, we simply go our separate ways. I enjoy sleeping in on weekends, staying up late to write or work out, staring into space as I dream up ideas and plans for my future. None of these things are possible, at least not very often, for the man with a girlfriend or wife making demands on his time. Guys, for those of you that have big ambitions and big goals and doing all these things for yourselves, which I highly encourage you all to do in varying degrees... A girlfriend, a wife is going to slow you down, believe me, okay? Because women, they'll want your attention all the freaking time, okay? I mean, for those of you guys that live with your girlfriends, or those of you guys right now that are married, you know what I'm talking about. Now, that doesn't mean that if you are doing something really great for yourself, it doesn't mean you can't get a great woman that's going to be supportive and think what you're doing is great, but she's still going to take up your time, believe me, okay? Women are the biggest, they, they can really get in the way of your goals and your time if you're not careful. So you got you got to make, guys, I've said this before, so many guys make women their purpose, which is insane. It's going to turn them the hell off, but also gets in the way of all your grandest goals. You need to make all your goals and ambitions your purpose, your top priority. That's at the top. Women are at the bottom. And interestingly enough, you're going to notice you, you put women at the bottom of your priority list. You put your purpose on top and the women at the very bottom, they'll be chasing after you. You ever notice the guys are very successful? Do you think they have time to chase after women? No. And yet those guys are successful and obviously take care of themselves. They got women chasing after them. So do what they do. For those of you guys that are interested in, obviously, hooking up, dating, and relationships. But just be careful with those relationships. I'm telling you now. He says here, A woman I'm seeing wants commitment. I'm currently dating a pretty woman whom I like a lot. She has a full, soft lips, deep brown eyes, and a sexy Coke bottle figure. She's fun in bed, easy to talk to, and loves hikes, beers, and dogs as much as I do. In just a few months, we spent almost every weekend together, camping trips, camping trips to the lakes, laughing and dancing in my kitchen while we make dinner together. It's go it's going great, and I'm thrilled. There's only one problem: she wants to be committed. I'm not surprised there. He says in quotes, "Can I call you my boyfriend?" She politely asked. On the eighth week of us dating and sleeping together, I deflected with a funny comment. Starting in month four, she posed the question in one way or another almost every time we see each other. I laughed it off, dodging and ducking like Muhammad Ali in a prize fight. The girlfriend talk. By month six, she was more insistent. She would make comments about being my girlfriend, still trying to keep it lighthearted. We were, out, we were out in the lake one weekend, and she started up with the girlfriend talk. I met her beautiful dark eyes with mine and paused for a moment. He says, a relationship happens when both people are ready, I said calmly. She nodded, my gaze still holding hers. I continued, I'm not ready. I like this woman's company, but I know what comes with the title of boyfriend-girlfriend. Emotional labor, limited sex, ding, ding, ding. Weekends at baby showers and farmer's markets, a woman bossing me around. He hit, he hit the nail right on the head. Notice how he says everything's really great now. Because she's chasing after him. She's chasing after making him her boyfriend. And that's the way it should be. Okay? And everything's great. But he knows darn well, 
from life experience, the second they put that label on, all of a sudden all this great sex they're having is going to stop. There's going to be nagging, emotional labor, bullshit like tr her trying to get him to go to a baby shower, which no self-respecting man should ever go to a goddamn baby shower. Okay, I don't even care if it's your own baby. Well, if it's your, if, okay, for you guys that are married or whatever, and obviously if you're having a, your wife's having a baby, because don't give me that we're pregnant nonsense, because we're not pregnant, she's pregnant. I hate that politically correct statement. Okay, yeah, you can go to your own child, your own wife's child's baby shower. That, that's one thing. But going to somebody else's? Are you fucking kidding me? But yeah, it'll change. So it's all great up until the label goes on. And then all of a sudden, all his free time, all the things that he enjoys about bachelorhood are bye-bye. So you guys, obviously... As you get older, you're gonna to have to determine what you really want here. You know, you can be. For, I know. I know. I got a lot of guys who might want to be serial monogamist. They may have a girlfriend for a while, but when it runs this course, they're done. Or have rotations. Whatever you want. Whatever makes you happy. But understand, once you get into some sort of commitment, even when you're older, because they're gonna be chasing for it, it's gonna impact the freedom that you enjoy. It's gonna impact the ease in which you can pursue your goals. So just be aware of that, guys. This is more for you younger guys, because I know I'm preaching to the choir to many of you. He says, in conclusion, by age 35, a man has been in a few relationships. He's experienced the ups and downs of trying of tying himself to a woman, tumultuous moods, crying fits, manipulation, and sky-high, often unreasonable expectations. And he's dead on about the unreasonable expectations. <clears throat> he's seen friends and older men beaten down and henpecked. They struggle through sexless marriages, bitchy wives, and divorce. Previously, the promise of sex was enough to balance out the drama. As the guy gets a little older, he enjoys and desires sex, but the incessant demand for sex tempers to become more manageable. He loves sex with a beautiful woman, but he also revels in free time to do hobbies, work out, or just be alone and think. The control that women have over men in their teens and 20s is access to sex. Once that is taken away, as she gets older and less attractive, and the man grows more mature and less controlled by his desires, the carrot that drives the donkey loses its appeal. After age 30, it's rare for a never-married man to ever get married. The longer he waits, the more he'll cherish his peace, quiet, and freedom. That is a damn good article. And like I said before, it pretty much sums up Almost everything that I've talked about and mentioned along the way over the last year and plenty of other great channels like that, guys. So just be aware of this for you younger guys that think that, you know, that you got to get some girl and, and getting her is your priority and all that, okay? Believe me, you're the low man on the totem pole now. It will get better. Instead of chasing after women, chase after your goals and ambitions. Better yourself in each and every way. You should be taking action every day, even if it's very little, to improve yourself educate yourself, anything like that. Become the best version of yourself. Become the best kind of bachelor that you can be. And I guarantee you, once you get to your 30s, and again, if you have no interest in marriage whatsoever, none of that, you're going to have it made. Again, so long as you take care of yourself, focus on your goals and ambitions, be appealing, okay? You can't just be 400 pounds and have no personality and no job and living with your mom and dad and think that at 35 years old, a floodgate of women are going to be coming chasing after you. doesn't work that way. you got to be the type of guy. You want to attract a certain type of woman, you got to be that same type. you got to mirror that, okay? So that's for you guys that want to do, obviously, hooking up and dating and all that. For the rest of you guys don't give a shit about that, Enjoy the freedom. Enjoy the peace and quiet. Enjoy your fishing, riding your motorcycle, hitting the gym, hanging out with your buddies, camping, whatever you enjoy doing. Have a great time, okay? But I warn you guys so many times about marriage. And this part talks about, obviously, the peace and quiet and ease of, of the life without actually being married. And then there's all the other financial shit, which I talk about plenty of other times, too. So, But anyhow, guys, I've gone on long enough. This has been a, a really good article. Really appreciate it. Definitely check out the link below if you want to re, uh, check it out on your own. So, all right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.